Good morning. Welcome to Morning Live with Russ and Kitty Walden. <laughs> it's a beautiful morning in the Ozarks. The sky is blue, a little chilly, but it's a beautiful morning. You got a nice cup of coffee. Yep. Got a fire going in the fireplace. <laughs> Y'all are welcome to come on over. <laughs> I just was trying to think of a way that, uh, particularly all of you that join us in chat, I wanted to think of a way I could I could give y'all a cup of coffee and I can't figure out how to do it. <laughs> There's the Starbucks cards. <laughs> if y'all had a cure egg, I could I could send you each a pod. Send a something. little pod of coffee. <laughs> well, today is Friday, and we're going to be doing something really different. I'll talk to you about in a minute. Uh, but uh, Friday is the day that I talk about two things. Um, if you appreciate the morning light, please share it with others. There's always a share button. Send to you can tell people about it. Uh, let them know that they can listen live, or they can listen after the fact because every broadcast is saved on demand at the same link where you go to listen. You can scroll back through the episodes or the uh, programs. Uh, the Lord told me that the day would come that the morning light broadcast would be as popular as successful as the daily prophetic word well the daily prophetic word goes out now to over 23,000 people a day Amen. Uh, the morning light it goes out to about anywhere between three and six hundred people will listen eventually over a week or so you know the the episodes remain out there we've got everyone we've ever done uh, but um, uh, I'm expecting I'm believing I know what I know what God told me and uh, but it's you're you're a part of that to tell someone to particularly like a particular teaching you say so and so would just love that we'll just save that URL hit that share button like it put it on your Facebook invite others uh, to listen and then also and so many of you particularly that drop in the chat you're a volunteer with us you're connected with us in some way you partner with us and support us already for which we say absolutely thank, thank you, you very very much <laughs> very we much. never take you for granted no. uh, but uh, uh, also those of you who may be new or haven't uh, taken the opportunity um, we receive offerings. Uh, this is our full-time ministry. It's not a sideline or some casual thing that we do. And so if you go to www.propheticnow.com or fathersheartministry.net or mediachurch.net, mm -hmm. uh, there is a donate link. And be sure to mention Morning, Morning Light. Light, the Morning Light broadcast in your donation. Uh, that way, we have a measurement of saying, yes, it's being heard, yes, it's being effective. Uh, because when reciprocity takes place, we know that value has been established. Let me say that again. When reciprocity takes place, we know that value has been established, and we want to be good stewards of our time. <clears throat> now, uh, something different we're going to be doing uh, for a while, and it's going to affect even some of the days that we broadcast. The Lord spoke to me last night. And he told me, he said, I want you to do 30 days of praise. Uh, and then he said, and I want you to do it on the morning light broadcast. 30 days of praise, which was amazing because you're going to see, I, I don't prepare these teachings. And sometimes you can tell by the written version. I don't prepare these till early, early, early in the morning. I get up between three and five. I look at the chapter and I see what God's going to have me say. And it's interesting that today's teaching is specifically going to emphasize oh, praise. That's something. And it really spoke to me. It let me know. Not only that, but 30 days of praise <clears throat> deposit says the very last day is the day of our next meeting here in Branson. That's wild. So we'll conclude the 30 days of praise. And then that night we're going into our precisely the prophetic meeting here in Branson, which if you want to know more about that, there's a link uh, posted in the Daily Word every day that you can learn about that. Um, we already have people that are uh, registering from all over the country, and we have those, you know, they, they're they in some far-flung nation, and they send us an email, please send me my plane tickets. And uh, we, but, but there are those, we never fail to have people come from out of the country or people from different parts uh, of the United States we're looking forward to this. We're Amen. hearing God Amen. and what this is supposed to look like. 
And uh, God's going to, if you have some some of the blessings of God or things you've been praying and believing God for have gone flatline, well, we're going to get out the paddles and we're going to charge the paddles of God's power and and uh, shock those dreams, visions, and prayers Amen. back into life. Amen. Amen. So, five minutes. so our prayer times, we're going to be doing this including just a praise session even on Saturday and Sunday. But it's not going to be a teaching on Saturday and Sunday. It's just going to be the prayer time. And the Lord said, don't belabor it. Don't make it a really long time. It's very focused. We're not going to go more than five minutes at the top of each <clears throat> broadcast. That We're just going to enter into praise. We're going to ask God how to target and, ha- and how to focus. And it's going to be 30 days of, of praise. And we're going to see in the teaching that those who don't, don't praise wind up with too little. And those who do praise wind up with too much. So ask yourself, would you like to have too much? Of, <laughs> would you like to have too much of some things? Now, you do say, you know, you, your in-laws come over and you say, that's too much. But I'm talking about too much of the good things. And we'll talk more about that, which was totally unintended uh, when I saw the teaching today, sure. how it played out. But let's just take about five minutes. And I'm asking you to verbalize with me. Yeah. And, I, and we're saying, God, we praise you. Lord, we worship you. Amen. We glorify your name. And we say you're worthy to be praised. Yes, Father. And you're a magnificent God. And you're just a one-of-a-kind God. And who's like unto you? There's nobody like you. Lord God, we worship and adore you. We sing your praises. Yes, we Father. speak your praises. Oh, nah, nah, we nah, exalt nah. your name. We exalt you for being yeah, nah, the nah, kind nah, and nah, loving nah, nah, Father nah, nah, that nah, you nah, are. And you can post your praises, folks. We thank you, Father God, for life and life abundantly that you give. That you're such a magnificent God. You're watching over all of us all the time, every day. And there's no uh, shadow of turning. There's no darkness. You're never hiding your face from us. We praise you that you're a consistent God. That we can magnify your name and it gets bigger. When we honor you and praise you, all of a sudden your name is larger. We're not afraid to praise you. Going out or coming in, lying down or arising, Father, we just give you praise. We say you're worthy of honor and you're worthy of thanksgiving. You're worthy of our time, our attention. We love your word, but we love you more than your word. We love the life that you give us. We thank you. We bless you, Lord. We thank you for your heart towards us. That you are a father and you have a great heart towards us. Yes, we exalt well, you. And, it, and we, I see you're using the chat box. And if you're listening uh, after the so live well, broadcast of the archive well. version, go to the comment section and put shut your praise. Well, yes. You know, when you clap your hands, the Bible says you'll clap your hands over the enemy. Amen. You're clapping your hands yes, over your Jesus. enemy, over the enemy that wants to take away, take praise out of your mouth. No, we, we praise you, God, because you are, a pop, you, you are a Papa God. You're, you're a good Papa. Oh, you sent up, forth so, your so, Holy so, Ghost so, so, uh, and you weren't crying uh, oh, most omnipotent Heavenly Father, you That's were right. pr- crying, Abba, Abba Daddy, Daddy God, God, we thank you Salt that you're bringing you. us into a yes. Daddy God relationship oh, with you, you, that you inhabit the praises yes. of your people. Oh, so we're you. casting a, a net a work of your spirit uh, to London, to Canada, to all over the United States, <laughs> to Australia, South Africa, yes. all over Jesus. the world. We're casting a net of praise that the whole planet is just fluorescing with the light of your praise today. We praise you. We're going to have 30 days of praise. We praise you, O God. We worship you. We're going to keep it targeted, Father God. You are so disposed that you you find delight and you appreciate the praises of your people. And Lord, what like uh, Ruth Ward Heflin said, she's up in heaven. I think she's looking down and she's saying, uh, praise till the spirit of worship comes. Worship till the glory comes and then stand in the glory. Thank you, God, for Ruth Ward (laughs) Heflin. Yes, we thank you for the cloud of witnesses. Yes, we praise Father. you, Father. we got a cheering team. we got cheerleaders. Praise God. Thank you, That's Jesus. Sweet. Love praise your praises. God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. You're, you're magnificent in all the earth. We praise you in the congregation. We praise you. We're by ourselves. We're not ashamed to lift our hands. We're not ashamed to dance a jig, Father, because we are praising you. And we're worshiping you with our whole body, with our mind, with our soul, with our spirit. 
our spirit, we're submitting them all to you. And we see the angels are being stirred to come hang out with us. I feel the presence of angels in this room and where our friends are just because you acknowledge you, you said in your word, when we talk of you, when we praise you, Lord God, that the angels even get out their book and they start writing down, oh my goodness, that morning light group is praising the Father and the angels join in the praise because you're worthy. There's nobody worthy like you, Lord God. Nobody deserves this time and attention the way that you do. You are altogether lovely and we magnify yes. your name and we say you are glorious, glorious God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. Thank you that your people have a heart to praise you and exalt you as well. Lord, you're lifting up the spirit of heaviness. All those who struggle under heaviness. All those that have lack. Take, All those that have out. too little, away, you're taking Father, us from that which is too little, and we're going to have too much. We're going to move into the too much territory and get out of the land of too little. We're going to have more. You. We're going to have increase because you're a God of increase. You're we a liberal God. You. You're a liberal God. You are a God of conspicuous consumption. Yes, you want us you to are. have more. You want your. We want to know your muchness. We we celebrate your muchness, oh God. Thank you, God. Thank Amen. You, God. Amen. Thank, Thank you, you God. for sharing praise with us. <laughs> Five, uh, 30 days of praise, and then and we won't be, be able to stop. And then on even on Saturday and Sunday, you're going to see a morning light uh, broadcast thrown out there, but it's only going to be five minutes. Five minutes of praise. Five minutes of targeted focused praise. Now, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, today, uh, we're looking in Joshua chapter 19. And yes. I looked at Joshua chapter 19. It was one of those, you know, looked like a, a real estate abstract. You know, it looked kind of... <laughs> God, what could you possibly say in this? And then I saw two particular verses that just jumped out at me. And I saw the Holy Ghost timing of 30 wow. days of praise. And please understand, I didn't read this chapter and then decide oh, no. we're going to do 30 days of praise. Oh, I just no. got it from the Holy Ghost last Hallelujah. night. Because we pray every morning. We There's wake up uh, mm -hmm. somewhere between 6.30 and 7.00. Uh, we we don't even come out of our bedroom till we uh, have a time of praise and we were we open our our window and we have a nice window in the front of the house and like Daniel we open that window and we're we're praying and mm -hmm. Joshua chapter 19 and I uh, you're gonna I want to pose the question to you in the teaching today what tribe are you of you're gonna see a diff uh, uh, a contrast between the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Dan in terms of their inheritance. Judah had too much, but Dan had too little. Oh. And Judah means praise, but Dan means judgment. Mm. So what tribe are you of? If you look around your life and you see that you want you I want you to feel so loved by God that you can even see um uh, you know the, the corns and warts on your on your spiritual experience. To so be real able to <laughs> identify and even see the things that hey that needs to change and you do that differently. Mm -hmm. You know and That's and um, to to look and say well, if if you have too little well maybe you're in the tribe of Dan and we're going to help you get out of the tribe of Dan. And in order for Dan to get to the place where they had uh, more than enough, they had to contend for the city of Leshem. And we're going to talk about Leshem is really, I thought, Leshem. I'm reading that stuff. I'm saying, God, what am I going to get out of this? <laughs> I looked up Leshem, and I was astounded at what I saw in order to get more territory. So let's study that today. And if you're a person who suffers with too little, this chapter is going to show you how to attain the increase. And, and you know, we get rid of that religious spirit that says, oh, you need to just settle for where you're at. Nah. You need to love God where you are. No, God is, look, this is a God. I, I had to repent. I look at TBN, and for years I've looked at TBN, PTL, and they have all them gilded chairs. And I mean, it looks like a Texas roadhouse, hello. And uh, and I look at that, I say, that's gaudy. It's just not necessary to have all that. And the Lord started talking. He says, if you don't like what the TBN set looks like, you're not going to like heaven. And he took me streets of gold well that's just not necessary we could have asphalt like judas we could have done something for the poor 
And oh man, I, I realized I was thinking. His mind. <laughs> I was thinking more like Judas than thinking like Jesus. Amen. God is a God of ostentatiousness. Yeah, opulence. He's a God that goes first class all the way. Amen. I can't wait till the day. I haven't been able to bring myself to do a first class plane ticket yet. We haven't, but the day's uh, coming. But the day's coming that it's going to be possible. <laughs> and not that it's it's actually been possible, but I just couldn't get over it. We haven't you know, <laughs> there is such thing as stewardship. <laughs> but at the same time, God goes first class all the way yes it does it's only money it's god right. will send more mm -hmm. god wants you to be and he wants you to have his his largesse to know his largesse and so i'm going to read because uh, these are some tough names and thank you kitty honey, does for so having good mercy on me kitty does really good to do them but <laughs> i wanted to do them our family's proud of me i try <laughs> and i'll start off and we're going to go down through chapter verse nine first okay and again, they're, remember wow. yesterday, they were dividing seven tracts of land, yeah. seven lots of land. And so now the second lot came forth to Simeon, even for the tribe of the children of Simeon, according to their families. And their inheritance was within the inheritance of the children of Judah. Yes. And they had in their inheritance Beersheba and Sheba, and Molada and Hazar Shul, and Bela and Azam and El Tolad and Bethel and Horma and Ziklag and Beth Markaboth and Hazar Susa and Beth Le Baoth and Sher Ruhen, 13 cities and their villages, Ain, Rimon and Ether and Ashan, four cities and their villages and all the villages round about these cities to Baal Lath Beer, Ramoth of the south. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Simeon, according to their families. And out of the portion of the children of Judah was the inheritance of the children of Simeon. So Simeon got property that was originally acquired by Judah. Uh, for the part of the children of Judah was too much. <laughs> Therefore, the children of Simeon had their inheritance within the inheritance of them. They had too much. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. It's like you're living in a house. This is too much. Let's just get somebody to move in with us. <laughs> you know, you got you go out to your get in your car and you look over there and you got another car and you're not even driving that car. Well, that's just too. I got too much. Let's let's bless somebody else with with this car. Uh, you had you had a look in your grocery cabinet. You got more food than you can eat before it spoils. Well, you got too much. Well, let's go. Let's see. Let's get rid of our surplus. Let's get some surplus. How about that? Uh, the above reference to the tribe of Judah is mirrored, and we're going to read it in a little while, is mirrored by the tribe in, of uh, Dan in verse 47. We're not reading verse 47 yet, but simply it says Dan had too little. So here's the parody, and that's what jumped out at me, the parody here of Judah had too much, Dan had too little. What does that mean? The tribe of Judah had too much. The tribe of Dan in verse 47, they had too little. Well, what can we learn from this? The name Dan means to judge, to act as a judge, to contend, and to strive. Hmm. Judah means to praise, to give thanks, to laud, yeah. to confess the name of God. Did you know there are still tribes and spiritual things today? Mm -hmm. You know, people talk about tribes. They don't understand that uh, the tribes, for the most part, particularly the ten northern tribes uh, who had split off from Judah uh, back in um, the days before Jesus came along, that the ten northern tribes went into captivity to Babylon and they never came back. They disappeared in history. They bred themselves out of existence. And so when you read the tribes in the book of Revelation, you realize, and they're talking, they say, well, God's bringing them back from the time when they were. No, he's not, because that's not how it reads. It says there's going to be 144,000 living people that are seen as coming from tribes. And if you read the tribes, you will not see there or at the end of the book of Revelation, the tribe of Dan mentioned. Why? Because Dan means judge. And mercy rejoices over judgment. Everybody wants to talk about judgment in the end times. And yes, of course, that God's going to settle accounts. But that's not the point. He's not focusing upon the judgment. He's focusing upon the mercy that he's bringing into the earth. Have you ever met somebody from the tribe of Dan? I have. <coughs> we run into people all the time. 
who are judgmental, they're harsh, they're unmerciful, and in fact, they're downright mean. They delight to make people uncomfortable. We heard a man the other day, a man who came from a, from a long distance, claimed to be a prophet, got up and was so cruel and mean to his wife. He exposed his wife. He exposed something that was so personal and so intimate. Uh, it, it hurt us. We sat there and it was like it was like getting stabbed in the heart. And we never even met this lady. It was awful. And he did it because I'm a prophet. That's what prophets do. No, I'm sorry. See, they delight to make un people uncomfortable. And when they are asked to explain, they say, yes, that's my calling. I am prophetic. Oh, really? I might have another word for it. We saw in the previous chapter that when they were inquiring of the Lord, they inquired of the Urim and the Thummim in that day. But then there came a time that they inquired of the prophetic. But when they inquired of the Lord, they went to Shiloh, which means peace and tranquility. Amen. Peace and tranquility. If the prophet you go to, the prophetic ministry that you're around, does not leave you in an environment of peace and tranquility, then they either don't understand their ministry, they've not matured in their ministry, or they're not called to do what they say they're called to do. I know that's not the way it's been said because we've taken the prophetic and we've used that as just some little category to put judgmental, mean-spirited, harsh people. Right. Uh, that, but the environment that we're supposed to provide is according to 1 Corinthians 14.3 that says that the, that the prophetic, including the office of the prophetic, is for edification, exhortation, and comfort. Now, prophets read that and they say, yes, the rank and file, you little puny church people, when you prophesy to each other, it's got to be edification, exhortation, and comfort because the only people that are in the office of the prophet can call down death, destruction, exposure. Right. Some This guy that, that tore his wife wide open at that meeting, he said, I'll know you're a prophet when you could tell me how many pastors have you openly rebuked, exposed, and excoriated, and brought to humility on their knees before your ministry. Then mm -hmm. I'll recognize your prophetic ministry. This sad. guy doesn't even have a clue. Sad. Broke my heart. And, uh, you know, I always ask God to give me grace in a situation like that. Because to be honest with you, I'm such an advocate for the prophetic as God intended that I want to stand up and stir things up. The day will you know? come, but we're not there Well, yet. I'm not even looking for that. You know, I, <laughs> I, I don't know need not. to, but it's just in me okay. to be an advocate for as God, prophetic as God wants it. Yes. There is nothing in the characteristic of a New Testament prophet that okay. justifies being a difficult judgmental person. That's right. There are many prophets in the New Testament. You will not find one of them, not one, who acted the way we claim prophets are authorized to act, and they even teach on it. They teach on it and delight on it. Hmm. Man, I've been in the meetings listening to their back channel communication, and they're talking about, they're just giddy. They're giddy. They're, they're on the edge of their seat talking about who got judged because they didn't listen to their prophecy, who dropped dead, and who lost out, and all this. It's, it's like, you know, it, it's like a Western, you know. They're, they're, they're showing each other their, their six guns. Uh, in Luke 9, 54 through 56, the disciples tried to act like Old Testament prophets like they do today. And Jesus rebuked them. He said, you don't know what spirit you're of. Amen. And then he effectively reconfigured the prophetic when he tells them. They said, well, why can't we be like Elijah? He says, because the Son of Man did not come to destroy, but to save. Quit trying to destroy what Jesus came to save Amen. and to bless. Amen. But they need to repent. That's right. But if you're one of those rebuking, negative, harsh, judgmental prophets you don't want people to repent don't tell me you do because romans chapter 2 verses 4 and 5 says that it is the goodness of god that leads men to repent now either you believe that or you go rip that page out of your bible if you truly want people to repent give them god's goodness but you're not giving them god's goodness you're giving them the eccentricities and the vagarities of your harsh personality and claiming if they don't accept it and humble themselves to you that they're not being humble to god but nowhere in the Bible does it say to humiliate yourself before man. You walk in humility before God. 
we get accused all the time of being arrogant uh, because we're not deferring and humbling ourselves to these guys running around denouncing everybody. That is not what God's called us to do. Jesus reconfigured the prophetic. Yes, in the Old Covenant, they were doing that. But Jesus reconfigured the prophetic, just like you see so many times in the Bible where Jesus says, you have heard it said in times past, but I say unto you, no. go look all them up. Well, this is one of those in Luke 9, 54 through 56. Jesus reconfigured the prophetic from an old covenant par of paradigm of condemnation to a new covenant paradigm of the goodness of God, because only the goodness of God will lead men to repentance. If God is good enough and somebody sees enough of God's goodness, they'll repent. I've seen hardcore belligerent uh, homosexuals that would get in your face and do everything they could to offend you and dare you to say anything about it. And I saw them completely repent and turn their lives around because of the goodness of God that was spoken into their life. Amen. So you won't find a single New Testament prophet acting like an Old Testament prophet unless he's getting rebuked for doing so. So we see in this verse that Judah, they go out and get their territory. Their name means praise, and they have too much. They got too much land. They got too much. They have to share it with Simeon. We'll get back to Simeon in a minute. Now, but we're going to go down to verse 47 a little bit, and we're going to find that Dan, that means judge, well, they have too little. <laughs> now, do you want too much, or do you want too little? Too much. If you have too little... What's the problem? Now, look, you've got to let the scriptures discern. Hebrews 4.12 says that the word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Let the word of God discern your situation. If you have too little, is it because you're of the tribe of Dan? Could it be? And usually you're making judgments in the very area where you're suffering need. I see people all the time. They're broke, on food stamps, can't pay their bills, thinking about bankruptcy, griping about money-grubbing preachers. Oh. I used to do that. Oh. I used to get up at 4 in the morning, lay hands on my TV, anoint it with oil, and pray that Charles Capps would go off the air. <laughs> and God worked me over so hard for that. <laughs> oh, I used to be so hardcore. I'd get on PTL and Jim Baker, and I'd just rick to rick to the Lord asked me one day in the middle of one of those self-righteous diatribes, he says, um, how much money have you given to Jim Baker? I didn't give him a dime of my money. Then shut your mouth, he said. Hello. <laughs> Who are you to judge another man's servant? Amen. Oh, thank you, God, for being so good to me, to correct me, to get me out of the tribe of Dan and into the tribe of Judah because I had too little, now I got too much. <laughs> So if you want to have too much, then get rid of the judgmental attitude and adopt praise. This gives us light on Matthew 13, 12. Now listen, Judah meant praise and had too much. Dan means judgment and has too little. Jesus said in Matthew 13, 12, he says, For whoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more in abundance, but whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that which he has. Now let's look at it like this. Whoever has praise, to him shall be given, and he shall have more in abundance. But whomsoever hath not, judgmentalism, from him shall be taken away even that which he hath. Mm. You think about that in those terms, it makes you look at that scripture just a little bit different. Now, because Judah had too much, part of their inheritance had to be given to Simeon. So I wanted to look up Simeon. What does Simeon mean? What does Simeon mean? Simeon means God hears. It means God hears, and it also means to hear and accept what is heard. So it's not just the fact that God hears. You can hear somebody say something, but you don't necessarily accept what they hear. But it means that it means to hear something and to accept what you hear. And the thing was, is his mama had been praying for more children, and Simeon came along, and she named him Simeon as a reflection of God heard me, and God accepted what I was asking him for. 
So when you are in praise, you're making room. You're going to see a manifestation of the fact. You're going to go from expectation and potential to manifestation and substance. You're going to see the substance. You're going to make room in your life for the substantial manifestation of those things that are an indication to you. God not only heard you, but he accepted what you said. He accepted what he heard. What does he accept? Praise. He said, I inhabit the praises of this. What does God accept? What is going to come out of your mouth that God accepts? Praise. Mm -hmm. It's one thing, no matter what's going on in your life, if you're praising, you might be a rascal. You might be doing and saying things you're not supposed to do and say. But if you'll turn around and begin to praise him, he's going to hear your praise. He's going to accept your praise. He's going to inhabit your praise. And you're going to wind up with too much. See, God hears your praise and accepts it. How do you know God? Now, you see, here's the response. Read between the lines. Here's the response God has to praise. How did Simeon's mama know God heard her? Because Simeon came along. Mm -hmm. So what is God's response to praise? You have to give God something to hear, something besides what I used to say all the time. I can't take it, God. Well, we've established that now. What? What was I doing? I was giving God something other than praise. I was giving God complaint. But if you'll give God praise, then you're going to see Simeon. You're going to have to give some of your that too much to Simeon because you're going to see that God hears and he's accepted. And you'll know he accepted by what you heard because all of a sudden your life is being defined as having a surplus as opposed to not having enough. Not enough time, not enough money, not enough energy. Man, I, I told Kitty, I, I said, I'm, I'm, I, I don't want, I don't want our testimony to be what comes off of us to be. We're just working so hard that we just don't have enough energy, don't have enough time, don't have enough help. Well, I'm tired of not having enough, and I'm tired of that being part of our testimony. Thank God for the demand of the ministry. Mm -hmm. It's fun. And help is we, on the way because we're and, praising. Uh, so now we're praising. How, what are we going to do? We've been trying. We've talked to consultants. Man, we've talked to people that used to consult for the military. We've talked to people who worked in the corporate world, people, powerful organizers. We have people working with us, volunteering, that are highly qualified. But what's the key? How do we you got to do this the kingdom way. Amen. If you want to have too much, we want to have too much help. <laughs> we just got too much help. How are we going to get it? Take Praise. Number. Thank you, God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> See, I love that in Moses. Hey, you know what I want, folks? I want to get to the place like Moses is that the people gave so much money that Moses had to say, quit giving. Yeah, that would be nice. Let's have a reverse offering. Come on. They're, they're, they give so much, Moses had come out and say, hey, restrain the people from giving. He did. He, Where he we, read it. we sit back and we just have to hire somebody. To send that money back electronically for everybody that's given. Thank you so much. We just appreciate everything you're doing. But we just got to give this back to you because we got more money than, than, than we need. And, and the, the money that we're having is just getting in the way of what God's telling us to do. So we're giving it back and saying thank you so much. Maybe give to somebody else. Let's have that kind of surplus. Let's, how awesome. are we going to get it? Be awesome. Because we're going to be like Judah. We're going to walk in praise. So if you don't have too much... Now you know how to put yourself in the position to be a receiver. It's not about how do I hold my mouth right. If it's just, there are all kinds of nuances about speaking the word, confessing the word, walking in warfare. But sometimes we get so wrapped up in all these convoluted 12-step programs that we forget it's real simple. Just praise him. If you praise him, you'll have too much. I've never heard anybody say this. I've been, I've been listening to preaching of the word. You know why? Because we look at chapters like that. Oh, that's boring. And we move on. Mm -hmm. This is what expository Bible teaching will get you. Right. Okay, let's read on down. Let's keep going. We're going to have to read a lot of this, these details about the, the property. It says, And the third lot came up for the children of Zebulun according to their families and according to the border of their inheritance was unto Sarid. And their border went up from the sea and Marala and reached to Dabasheth and reached to the river that is before Jotniam, and turned from Sarid eastward toward the sun rising unto the border of Chrysloth Tabor, and then goeth out to Dabirath, uh, 
and goeth up to Japhia, and thence passeth along the east to Gitahifer, and Itachazin, and goeth out to Rimon methoar <laughs> to Nia, and the border compasseth it on the north side of Hanathon, and the outgoings thereof are in the valley of Jephthahel, and Keta, and Nahalal, and Shimron, and Ida. Dela and Bethlehem, hello, twelve cities uh, with their villages. This is the inheritance of the children of Zebulun, according to their families, these cities with their villages. And the fourth lot came out to Issachar for the children of Issachar, according to their families, and their border was toward Jezreel and Chesoleth and Shunem and Hatharim and Shion and Anna Harath and Rabbath, and Kishion, and Abez, and Remeth, and Enganim, and Enhada, and Beth Pazes, and the coast reacheth to Tabor, and Shahazimah, and Beth Shemeth, and the outgoings of their border were Jordan, 16 cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the children of the tribe of Issachar, according to their families, the cities and their villages. And the fifth lot came out to the tribe of the children of Asher, according to their families. And their border was Helkath, and Hala, and Betan, and Akshaph, and Alamelech, and Amad, and Misael, and reacheth to Carmel westward, and to Shihor Libnath, and turneth toward the sun rising to Beth Dagon, and reach the house of Dagon, and reacheth to Zebulon, and to the valley of Jephthal toward the north side of Bethimek and Neiel, and goeth out to Kabul on the left hand, and Hebron, and Rehob, and Hamon, and Cana, even to the great Zidon, and then the coast turneth to Ramah, and the strong city of Tyre, and the coast turneth to Hosa, and the outgoings thereof are at the sea from the coast of Akzib, Uma also, and Aphek, and Rehob, twenty and two cities and their villages. This is the inheritance of the children of Asher, and Asher shall dip their foot in oil, and they've actually drilled for oil and found it in the territory belonging to Asher. Praise they've been God. doing that a long time, and they finally started finding it. According to their families, these cities with their villages, the sixth lot came out to the children of Naphtali, for the children of Naphtali, according to their families, and their coast was from Heleth and Alon and Zayanamin and Adamai and Nekeb and Jabneel and Lakem, and the outgoings thereof were to at Jordan, and then the coast turneth toward Asnoth Tabor, and goeth out from thence to Hukok and reacheth to Zebulon on the south side, and reacheth to Asher on the west side, and to Judah upon Jordan toward the sun rising. And the fenced cities are Zidim, Zer, and Hamath, and Rakath, and Chinnereth, and Adama, and Ramah, and Hazor, and Kedesh, and Edrei, and En Hazor, and Iron, and Migdalel, and Horam, and Bethanoth, and Beth Shemesh. 19 cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the children of Naphtali, according to their families, the cities and their villages. And the seventh lot came out to the children of Dan, according to their families, and the coast of their inheritance was Zorah, Eshtael, and Urshemesh, and Sheol, Laban, and Agilon, and Jethla, and Elon, and Thimnath, and Ekron, and Eltika, and Gibbethon, and Baalath, and Jehud, and Ben Berek, and Gath Rimon, and Mejarkon, and Rakon, and the border of Japho, and the east coast, and the coast of the children of Dan, now listen, went out too little for them. Therefore the children of Dan went up to fight against Leshem and took it and smote it with the edge of the sword and possessed it and dwelt therein and called Leshem Dan after the name of Dan their father. So we have Judah has too much and their name means praise. Dan means too little and their name means judgment. Now do you have too much or too little? And what tribe are you of? And you can change tribes. That's right. Now, if you are pridefully holding on to your membership in the tribe of Dan, I would say, how's that working for you? Turn your card in. Never <laughs> fails. When people look at our website and they are so provoked by something they see that they want to send a little nasty gram 
a little email from hell. And man, they are coming down on us like white on rice. And they are being eloquent and they're being forceful and they are just saying all this stuff. And I always go look. See, these people forget that at some point or another, they requested a prophetic word from us. Mm -hmm. And so I go back and I'll look up their name in our prophetic request. And sure enough, I'm broke. Mm -hmm. The doctor says I have a terminal disease. My kids have run off not living for God. My wife's threatening to divorce me. My life's falling apart. I don't know what to do. What's the problem? They got too little. Well, they're of the tribe of Dan. That's their problem. Mm -hmm. And what do you do if you find yourself in the tribe of Dan, and sometimes we're so myopic in our uh, uh, affiliation in our tribe, we don't want to realize it. I'm not judgmental. No, I'm not. Well, let's let's mirror that. Do you have too much or too little? Mm. And that, now, does that mean every time? I don't know, but I would say it's worth looking at, don't you? Right. I'm not being mean to you. I'm trying to help you. If you have too little, because in the very area where you have a deficit may be the very area where you're in judgment right. and you're judging. Right. And you need to go from the tribe of Dan to the tribe of Judah. <laughs> and then you'll have too much. You'll be praising. Are you listening to me? <laughs> I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm right. not, I'm, judgmental people are some of the most thin-skinned people you could ever imagine. They get offended if you don't accept all their criticisms, but man, if you even look at them with something other with than, than total approbation, approval, and you're the best thing since sliced bread, man, they get utterly offended. I'm not trying to offend you. I'm trying to help you. Amen. Do you have areas where you have too little? Let's look really hard at that. Maybe we need, maybe we need to get involved in 30 days of praise. It really speaks to me, the sovereignty of God, that this would be today's teaching when God yeah. told us about 30 days of praise. It's always been appropriate as we've gone through the Word. So if you maintain your place in the tribe of Dan, how would you know it? One way of knowing is looking around and realizing, I have too little, not enough money, not enough time, not enough energy, not enough years left in your life. And every time we, I, I, I tell Kitty, I said, I, I'm too old for this. God says, because I have time, you have time. Amen. <laughs> He doesn't say that anymore. What do we do then? What did the tribe of Dan do? What did they do? When Dan, we have too little, they contended for Leshem. Okay, what does Leshem speak to? The word Leshem means a precious stone. Mm -hmm. I told Kitty one time, we were broke up, and I was trying to get past being broke up when we were dating, and I had to pray it through, and, and I sent her a, a letter, and I said, uh, I tried to say, I give you to God, and I quoted that verse of scripture that says, I commend you to him that is precious, because Jesus is the precious cornerstone. Little did I know that for 20 years God told her that the one who would be her husband, that she would call him precious. <laughs> so he was, he was able to communicate something that only God knew to me. So here I was giving her to God and saying, <laughs> it's okay, we're never going to be together. I understand, I get that, I'm humbling myself to that. And then as a postscript, I'm saying, by the way, I'm the guy. <laughs> it's me, and he didn't even know it to the appointed moment. <laughs> Lishim means a precious stone. And particularly it was a stone in the breastplate of the high priest that corresponded to Joseph, who is Jesus. He's a type of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the tribe of Dan, what do you do? You go find the precious stone. It was, and it was believed that this stone, if you look it up, it was believed that the stone held special electrical properties even in ancient times. I'm talking about back thousands of years ago they thought there was something mystical and special about this stone and even in ancient times its name is synonymous with mystery so if you're in the tribe of Dan you need to be contending for the mystery what mystery Paul talked about it Colossians 1 26 Christ in you the hope of glory you need to start contending yes uh, you may know how wonderful you are but what about that person you've been judging God told me one time, he says, when I look at you, Russ, I see the lamb. I don't look at your faults. Hallelujah. He said, Russ, when I look at you, I see the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He said, that's what I want you to look at when you look at people. And then he said this, the degree to which you see the lamb in others, Russ, 
is the degree to which you will experience the benefits of the fact that I see you that way. Amen. And if you refuse to see the lamb and others, even in the lost, because God looked at the lost and sent his only begotten son, they look so good to him. They loved him. Mm-hmm. And to the degree you see the lamb, to the degree you look at others and you are provoked as God was provoked to, to love them, to the degree you the same transaction happens in your life looking at others, to that same degree you experience the dividends of the fact that God sees you that way. Amen. If you have the unfortunate experience of seeing something other than the Christ in your fellow man, that means you have strayed into the tribe of Dan. And the side effect of that is having too little. I really hope that there's people listening today that have the courage to just analyze themselves and make a change. Yeah. There are so few Christians, sinners repent, but so few Christians repent. I know of very few. I've been in the ministry for over 30 years, and I can count on one hand the number of Christians I've seen repent. My goodness. And really soul deep repentance. And I pray this is one of those times for you because you're questioning and you're getting over into a theology of unbelief and false suffering but to justify the fact that you don't have enough, the fact that you're suffering, the fact that you're struggling, the fact that you don't have enough, and you're turning that into some gilded suffering for Jesus. I get people email me all the time. I'm broke on food stamps and got a terminal disease. It's my cross to bear. You don't understand. God will never put on you something that Jesus died to take off of you. Amen. But they turn it into some religious badge of attainment, and it is so perverse. God wants you to have more than enough to strive and contend for Leshem or for the mystery. And sometimes you're really striving. You see somebody and they're treating you wrong and they're being mean to you and they're not being kind to you and they're motivated to do so and you ha- you have to say to yourself, I'm contending for the mystery in that rascal. I'm contending for the mystery in that so-and-so. I'm contending for the mystery in this person who's being unkind to me. I'm going to contend for the mystery. And then you do. Your response is, hey, hey. Look at me. Look at me. I'm going to love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. I love you because I love you because I love you. <laughs> Amen. I love you. No strings attached. Or oh, they get mad, and they start hurling javelins at you called prophetic words. And you say, look, 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 look. Yeah, I get that. I, and I repeat everything. Yeah, I know you're saying this. I said, all I want you to know is one thing. Remember the last time you saw me? I was moving towards you in love. Amen. Because I'm contending for the mystery of God on the inside of you. <laughs> well, then you come out of not having enough into having too much territory. Thank you, Lord. See, God wants you to see the lamb in others. To the degree you see the lamb in others determines the extent to which you will experience the benefit of God seeing the lamb in you. If you don't see the lamb in others, then you will experience too little. If you have too little money, too little time, too little energy, too little health, you are not you are experiencing a deficit of what Jesus died to provide the surplus of in your life. And why are you putting up with that? <laughs> you should be pulling out all the stops, going to change whatever I have to change to see something happen in that area. Get out of the tribe of Dan and choose the tribe of Judah. Dan has no place. Look in the book of Revelation. You will not find the tribe of Dan because mercy triumphs over judgment. So this is the inheritance of the children of Dan, according to their families, these cities and their villages. When they made an end of dividing the land for an inheritance in their coast, the children of Israel gave an inheritance to Joshua, the son of Nun, among them. According to the word of the Lord, they gave him the city which he asked for, even timnath Sirah in Mount Ephraim. And he built the city and dwelt therein. These are the inheritances which Eleazar the priest and Joshua the son of Nun and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel divided for an inheritance by lot in Shiloh. Mm. Peace, tranquility. Mm -hmm. They didn't get it in a church. They weren't having church fights in Shiloh. Hello. We put an article today out called Have You Been Church Hurt? Uh, at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, so they made an end of dividing the country. The end of the dividing of the land was in Shiloh. It means tranquility and peace. When Hebrews teaches us to labor to enter and to rest, what does that mean? 
You have to go to the Old Testament here, to the book of Joshua, to figure that out. You have to get out of the problem mentality. See, many people get over their problem, and you know that you don't have a problem, but you got everybody else having problems. But you got to get out of the problem mentality and go move out of the wilderness and move into the potential mentality of the promised land. How do you know you've gone from your problem to your potential? You quit seeing the problem in others and start seeing their potential. And guess what? Many times they'll hate you more because you're speaking to them according to their potential than when you were speaking to them according to their problem. I've never been so accused of being a false preacher as when I saw the potential in people and I had more faith for them than they had for themselves. I've seen more people be driven off because they like their problems. Their problems are the excuses they use for not doing what Jesus said. So when you move from your problem mentality of the wilderness to the potential mentality of the promised land, what do you do when you get there? You take the land. What land do you take? Well, that depends what tribe are you of. Are you of the tribe of Dan? Are you just judgmental? Critical, always pointing the finger? Speaking in terms of ought and should have where others are concerned? Come on, you know you've done it. Some of you listening, I know you've done this. You, you said, yes, I'm prophetic. No, that's not being prophetic. That's being of the tribe of Dan, and it brings the curse of having too little. And God wants you to have too much. <laughs> Being of the tribe of Dan and your portion is too little. But if you move over into praise, then you will be of the tribe of Judah and you'll have too much and you'll get to share it with Simeon because God has heard you and he has accepted your praise. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you that we uh, can change tribes midstream. We just need to know where we are and where you want us to be. We want to be praisers, Father. We thank you for this revelation of 30 days of praise because I know what's going to happen. We're going to be so infected with praise when we're done. We'll just be having a praise on our lips all day long, no matter what comes, no matter what the mail is, no matter what the phone calls are. We're going to be in a place and a posture of praise. We're just going to get better and better at it as the tribe of Judah. So thank you for loving us so much that you you're teaching us and we're extracting even with these special names that we're going through you're you're extracting the precious from those things that are confusing and not understood from the old testament and you're bringing us life because you're a god of abundant life and that's what we're gaining and we thank you for it we thank you for our family in jesus christ's name amen